Today, I'm super excited to be taking a look at Canon's brand new firmware for the C70, which brings some fantastic updates, including internal cinema raw light recording. In this video, we'll be taking a look at all of the new features in the firmware, as well as how much extra the raw capabilities get out of the camera and whether you should be shooting raw or not. So let's take a look at it. The biggest addition in this new firmware is undoubtedly the introduction of Canon's 12-bit cinema raw light recording format available to shoot internally now. This consists of three different flavors, LT, ST, and HQ. When the camera is in its Super 35 sensor mode, you can record DCI 4K, LT up to 60 frames per second, and ST up to 30 frames per second. When the camera is in its Super 16 mode, you can capture 2K in LT, ST, and HQ up to 60 frames per second. Just remember this will crop in on the sensor. When it comes to media, the data rates aren't actually that high, but not all SD cards are born equal. During these tests, we used two separate Angelbird V90 SD cards and had buffering issues with the 64 gigabyte variant, but not the 128 gigabyte one. So I would suggest getting larger capacity cards if you can. If we take a look at the data rates comparatively to some of the rated speeds of these cards, you actually may not need a V90 SD card to get reliable footage with no drop frame rates, but this is what Canon recommends. So if you want to use a lesser card, you can do so at your own risks, or just make sure you test your media before recording anything crucial. I've seen a few people shooting on V60 cards with no issues, so these may be the best balance of reliability and cost. While shooting in any of the raw modes, you can enable proxy recording by selecting it under the second card record function. Once this is set up, you can then record 2K4208 bit proxies to your second card slot, which could be handy if your editing system can't handle the raw files from this camera. Recording RAW is only available in the regular recording mode. All other modes are greyed out when in any of the flavours of RAW. The XFAVC inside of the C70 was already pretty great, but the added flexibility of being able to shoot RAW is awesome. This version of RAW in the camera is much more compressed than other RAW formats in cameras at the C70's price point. Check out these data rates from other cameras for example. If you haven't shot RAW before, the big benefit is the ability to change a range of parameters depending on what program you bring it into, such as color temperature, tint, ISO, as well as your color space and gamma. And you can really manipulate your image in post much more than the more compressed formats. So this would be great for projects where you want to rely heavily on color grading in post. However, it can also be great for correcting exposure and white balance in run and gun scenarios where you may make mistakes with them from time to time. We wanted to shoot some very quick example shots in RAW to see how it behaves in a more interesting setting than just our testing. So for this, we captured some outside sunrise shots, as well as some shots of our lens engineer, Ben, working on a Cook S4. We really liked the image out of the C70 already, and it's a similar looking image with this RAW update, just obviously with all the benefits of RAW that we've mentioned already. Let us know what you think of the footage down in the comments below. When it comes to noise reduction, you can tweak the different options in your chosen color profile in the camera. When shooting RAW, you can still tweak the noise reduction, however it isn't applied. You have two options for this, spatial filter and frame correlation. I've put links to some detailed descriptions of these two terms, but Essentially, spatial filter is a type of noise smoothing and frame correlation is a method that involves the camera analyzing the current frame of the previous frame. When we look at clips in RAW and XFAVC with noise reduction on and off, we can see a clear difference between the two. And this is obviously because of the noise reduction on XFAVC and the different compression methods used between the two of them. 
The C70 with some noise reduction on in XFABC is really clean and to be honest so are the raw files when properly exposed. But some noise reduction in post can really clean up your image and doing so in post allows for greater control but will obviously increase processing times if this step is needed. The trade-off for enabling this noise reduction is loss of detail, but it could be worth enabling depending on the scenario. It's also worth experimenting if you are planning on doing noise reduction in post, as having this processed in camera does have its benefits, but the flexibility of doing this in post allows for better image quality control. We also wanted to see if the new RAW modes have changed the latitude of the C70, so for this we shot RAW ST, LT and XFFEC 4210-bit intra all in DCI 4K in C-Log2 with all of its default settings. We used our trusty Otis 55mm f1.4 using a Canon RF to EF adapter. The camera was set to ISO 800, which is the native ISO for C-Log2. We then used false color to expose mid gray on our chart for each base exposure. We have uploaded the full rushes for these in our Vimeo, so if you want to check them out, you can do via the link in the description below. When it comes to overexposure, performance is almost identical but we can see a difference in the way the skin tone transitions to clipping. The raw clip seems to have a bit more information in those transitions. You can also see more saturation with raw over XFABC across the whole image. When it comes to underexposure performance, the big difference between them is the amount of noise. And this is because there is no noise reduction with the raw footage, but there is with the XFABC, which means using the same methodology and not adjusting color or white balance, the raw looks more noisy and shifts green. However, you can do a bit of noise reduction and white balance tweaking in Resolve and get it looking better. But when you think about all of the benefits of shooting raw that we have mentioned, with a little bit of extra processing you can get a better image when underexposing like this. Apart from the really really low light stuff where you may want to consider shooting XFABC. There are benefits to both raw and XFABC when shooting in these overall underexposed situations. If pure image quality is most important to you, RAW may be the better option, but overall latitude has not improved much if at all with this update. We also wanted to see how the new formats compared in terms of detail. So for this we shot our test chart with a range of key formats, as well as some shots out in the wild in some high detailed areas. First off when bringing the footage into Resolve, choosing the correct decode quality is important as there is a big difference between using Resolve's decode and Canon's. I would suggest using Canon's to get it looking similar to the DeBear being used in the camera. I would also suggest turning off or at least adjusting the plus 10 sharpness that is automatically applied when you are using clip decode. When importing clips into Premiere, it looks to use Canon's default one. When we compare 4K RAW ST and LT to XFABC Intra Force 210 bit, you can see a clear difference between them, when pixel peeping on our chart that is. You can also see similar aliasing performance across all of the formats with some Mare present in the highly detailed areas in the center of our frame. When we compare the RAW formats in the Super 16 mode, we can see a clear compression difference between the three flavors of RAW. I would say the biggest step is between HQ and ST, but there is definitely still an obvious difference between LT and ST. These results aren't surprising. The lower the compression, the more detailed the footage. So I would suggest using whatever you want in a given scenario and doing some testing yourself to see what level of compression you are happy with. But compared to other RAW formats, this is quite compressed. So I would most likely be using the highest quality possible when shooting with the C70. But XFABC definitely still has its place for faster turnaround projects. If you've never really processed Canon Cinema RAW Lite before and are thinking about grabbing the C70 now it can capture RAW, I would suggest downloading some of our test footage, which I've made available down below, and seeing how it edits and plays on your system. There are several facets of editing that will slow down when using RAW. Renders will take longer, playback will be worse, and process heavy tasks like warp stabilizer take longer to process. But these are trade-offs you make for the benefits of shooting RAW. You could also use the proxies that we mentioned earlier. Our two primary NLE systems we use are Premiere Pro and Resolve, and each of them handles Canon RAW a little bit differently. Resolve has good RAW parameters which are comparable to other RAW formats on the market. You can find the RAW settings here. Premiere's RAW functions are a little lacking over something like R3D or B-RAW, with only a handful of parameters to tweak, and no ISO steps like in Resolve for example, just an exposure slider. Overall though, performance on our Windows workstations and Mac Studio was pretty good, and nowhere near as taxing as the 8K R5C RAW footage, but that isn't surprising. So overall, I think the addition of RAW will allow shooters much more flexibility in post, and get a more detailed image overall with a touch more noise. 
Data rates are actually pretty comparable to XFAVC if you're shooting an intra frame. So what format you need to choose will really come down to what production this camera is going onto and the workflow the footage is going through. For people like myself who often shoot run and gun style, RAW is going to be a fantastic choice. Just bear in mind the longer processing and export times that will come with it. The sensor in this camera is absolutely fantastic and this update really lets it shine even more. Just bear in mind that you can't record RAW and use the digital IS that is in the C70 at the same time. The first of the new recording modes that Canon have added to the C70 is interval recording. This works similarly to the system in the R5C, so you can select between your time interval, aka your time between each captured frame, and then your capture frame rate, of which you can choose between 1, 3, 6, and 9. You can tell you're in this mode when you see INT at the top of the screen. It will also give you a countdown as well as an indicator on whether the camera is capturing frames or not here too. It will also only add on time to your rolling timecode as frames are captured. However, I do wish that this feature was a little bit more fleshed out with calculations of clip length, for example. The shutter is also limited when compared to a stills camera. In the regular shutter mode, the slowest you can go down to is 1 25th of a second. However, in the slow shutter mode, this is expanded to 1 12th of a second. But once in this mode, you can't change this at all unless you change your base to 50p and then you can go between 125th and 112. 112 may not be long enough for people who want a bit more motion blur and longer exposures, so fingers crossed Canon updates this to allow for longer exposures. The second of the new recording modes that Canon have added is frame recording. This is basically a frame limiter that can be used to create visual effects like stop motion. When you enter this mode, you can choose how many frames you want a single button press to record. This can be 1, 3, 6 or 9. You will know you're in this mode when you see the FRM mode flashing at the top of the screen. When you hit the record button, the camera starts recording your compiled clip. To grab the frames you want, all you need to do is hit the record button and the camera will capture the amount you've selected. This isn't obvious when using one frame though. Ending the recording is actually quite cumbersome as well. You have to go into the menu and then change the recording mode. Hopefully Canon can introduce a custom function button to end the clip instead of having to do this. In both of these new modes, your base frame rate will be what the camera is conforming these modes to. The details we have mentioned are also applicable across the different system frequencies. It is also a bit of a shame that you can't capture these new modes in RAW, but there's obviously reasons behind this. So for people who want more comprehensive options for these recording modes, a stills camera is going to give you more control and flexibility. But having these slightly compromised versions in the C70 means it's an incredibly complete camera they can do lots of different things, which is great if you don't want to carry around loads of different camera bodies for different scenarios. As well as the additions we've already mentioned, Canon also added two color profiles, EOS Standard and EOS Neutral. These are aimed to be used for fast turnaround projects or matching the C70 with legacy DSLR and mirrorless cameras from Canon that don't have YDR or the same log profiles as the C70. You can get a nice image with these profiles, but whether you like them or not is up to you. For these shots here, we expose the image for our C-Log2 and then switch between the different color profiles in RAW and XFABC. Personally, I think most people will still just stick with YDR for straight out of camera imagery. Getting your C70 updated is super easy. Just head over to Canon's website, download the firmware for your operating system. Inside the zip that you download, there'll be a PDF explaining the update process. Just give it a quick skim, but essentially you just extract the firmware file to the root of your SD card, which should be freshly formatted in your camera. You can then eject your card, pop it into the B slot in your camera, make sure it's the B slot as the camera won't see the firmware if it's in the A slot. You can then head to your firmware tab here, just hit OK a bunch of times until your camera starts loading the firmware on. Make sure to use a full battery or even better, have your camera plugged into the mains as well. Let it load and you're done. It's great to see how much Canon has managed to get out of the C70. It was already an incredible package for filmmakers but these additions are what people have been asking for and now puts it in a pretty unique space amongst its competition. The raw footage that the camera can capture is awesome. I love the sense that the C70 has and this paired with a raw workflow can result in some really fantastic imagery. This camera is now even more of a compelling package than it already was, especially at its price point. Let us know what you think of the new firmware for the Canon C70 in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.